Hi, my name is Sam, and this is the story of my adventure with Cat and Fish and his boat, the Pink Lady the Second. At 8 a.m. sharp, I pulled up to the pier along the banks of Booth Bay. The sun was low and the water was slow, but the crew was rolling, tugging, filling, and talking, getting ready for a day on the sea. Patient passengers piled aboard with sunscreen and snacks, hats and packs brimming with binoculars and cameras. Even on a warm, calm day, being on the boat was a little like standing on one leg with one eye closed. I met our captain, Tabor, and he told me a bit about how he came to drive the Pink Lady. My name is Tabor Young. I got my first boat when I was 12 years old from money that I had earned picking potatoes on a family farm in Arusa County, Maine. I went to the University of Maine for outdoor recreation and other various natural science with some tourism. And then in 2005, after I was graduated from University of Maine, I had the opportunity to start driving boats for Captain Fish. And I've been here from then until now in 2020. Prior to driving the boats here, I worked as part of the crew as a deckhand and earned my sea time and was able to get my license that way. We were on the hunt, looking carefully and closely for the small birds called puffins. But along the way, we couldn't help but observe the many other creatures that call the ocean their home. Quick, on the starboard side, we've spotted a mysterious mola mola catching some sun on the surface. Mola mola, or sunfish, can grow up to 11 feet and can weigh two tons. You can move like a mola mola by laying as flat as you can on your back. Bring your knee to your chest like a tall dorsal fin, sculling and moving your bony body through the water. What's that on the bow? Why, it's Atlantic white-sided dolphins. Where you see one, you're bound to see more. They often swim in groups or pods of two to 50 individuals. These creatures will even work together to hunt fish. What family members do you have in your pod? Ah, uh, after an eventful ride, we finally made it to our destination, Eastern Egg Rock, the home of the small but mighty puffin. Tabor cut the gurgling engine and we slowly drifted, everyone silent, looking carefully for those bright orange beaks and feet. Puffins! Puffins are small birds, only 10 inches in height. Scientists are still learning new things about puffins each day. Meet Dominique, our resident naturalist, as she tells us a bit more about these intriguing creatures. Hi, my name is Dominique. I work here at Captain Fish's Cruises as the naturalist aboard our Whale Watch and Whale Watch Puffin Cruises. I went to the University of Maine and I got a degree in zoology as well as one in marine science. And one of my missions in life is to be able to educate people because a big part of conservation and conserving these endangered species is to educate people and help them gain an appreciation of the species as well. We're not gonna be able to conserve or help these species thrive and survive if people don't know anything about them. Well, one of my favorite things about puffins, I would have to say, is their beak. Everybody loves their colorful beak, but some of the things they don't realize about their beak is how efficient they are for puffins. Um, puffins have these little barbs on the underside of their beak and their tongue that allow them to trap fish in between so they can keep catching more fish so they can go back to the nest with a beak full of fish instead of one fish at a time. And that makes them really, really efficient and good at what they do. And that's just something I've always really liked about them. As we sat quiet and still, the little island was anything but, animated by all the life upon it. Gulls, petrels, eiders, and terns, bustling, popping, peeping, and squawking. But it wasn't always like this. Not too long ago, Eastern Egg was empty. Missing most notably the little orange-footed fluffy clowns of the sea, our Atlantic Puffin. 
But scientists, just like a detective, watched and observed and got to questioning, where have all the puffins gone? Over time, scientists worked together to make Eastern Egg Rock a social community and a safe place for puffins to nest. Now there are about 500 pairs of puffins who return each year to the seven acre island. So remember, whether you're on a ship, in a lab, or in your own home, you too are a scientist. By watching, counting, and noticing, you can make change happen. Keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your brain on. Goodbye for now, young scientists, and good luck. Did you know Scientists get creative and crafty too. Feeling curious? Visit projectpuffin.audubon.org to learn more about the wild ways that researchers use sound, mirrors, and even pretend puffins to bring colonies back to Eastern Egg Rock and beyond. And if you'd like to go on your very own puffin tour, visit mainwhales.com to book a tour with Cat and Fish's cruises today. Make sure to say hi to Captain Tabor and the rest of the crew for me, and happy exploring. <laughs>